I entered the monastery when I was 20, and the monastery is not unlike a prison. It's, uh, it was very strict order I entered, called the Trappist. You might have heard of Thomas Merton, he was a member of that order. But when I entered, you, you, the first five years we couldn't speak to anyone except the abbot and the novice master, both of whom could send you away if they didn't uh, like your looks. So they weren't exactly uh, the most friendly uh, sources of relation, relating with. Uh, that experience with silence, however, was very, very valuable. And uh, really centering prayer comes out of, of my experience, which is not just mine, but the monastic experience, which is which has been going, at least in, the, in other religions, for a long, long time, and in the Christian religion from the earliest times of its inception. And it teaches you uh, what the 12 steps of AA teach you, that all of us are in recovery. Everybody needs healing. Everybody is quite sick emotionally. Everybody has incredible wounds that we bring with us from early childhood when we are just a bundle of emotional needs. And to survive, we have to have an enormous amount of affection, physical affection, touching, kissing, loving, hugging. And we need a, a certain amount of independence, control, and power. And we need, above all, security needs. And when these are denied, then as little people, we develop programs for happiness uh, based on one of those three energy centers, you might say. And when our deeds are not met, which is most of the time, especially when, when they're seriously uh, denied, as in the case of rejection or abuse, sexual or physical, then much of that emotional turmoil and pain is, shrug is, is shrugged into the unconscious, where it remains with all its energy, but it's no longer accessible to our awareness. So it secretly influences our decisions and our lives. Well, uh, uh, monks are just the same as everybody else. We have to face this addictive process, which is the, uh, the, the, the greatest uh, secret that human nature has devised to hide the pain that we don't want to face in our emotional life. And, and we need a means of being able to face it and trust in God, trust in the higher power, as AA calls it. Is a, is a very important ingredient. And the other is a, a discipline of silence, of learning to listen. And in the depths of silence, there arises the freedom on the part of the body to begin to evacuate the undigested emotional material of a lifetime. If we don't, then it influences our conduct and it interferes with our relationships with God, with other people, with ourselves. And hence come all kinds of social uh, problems. And every, every institution is made up of people with this problem. That is to say, with a bunch of false selves that motivate uh, people most of the time unless they take themselves in hand and choose a discipline of prayer and action to allow the divine therapy, the infinite love of God, to heal us. Now when this starts to happen, we experience it sometimes, depending on our religious training, as punishment. It's not that at all. It's the mercy of God and the infinite love of God trying to reduce the obstacles in us that prevent him from uh, totally invading our spirit 
and transforming our inmost being and our faculties into the unconditional love of God. And, and so everyone is in recovery. Everyone. Only a lot of people are not aware that they're sick yet. And so we are all in this kind of together. And instead of uh, fighting each other, we need to hold hands and climb out of the, the human condition, which is kind of a swamp, you might say, in which we all partake more or less. It, it's in, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the emphasis is that everyone, everyone is the child of God and loved by God. It's more important to know this than, than to and to rely too heavily on our own religion as if it required of us to disregard the uh, other people who are outside of it. And so the tragedy of, of human history is that religion itself has caused more violence than probably any other one factor in history. Why is that? It's not that the religions have a problem, at least not too serious. It's that each of us has a desperate security need and a religion provides one with a security system that is more valuable, more pervasive in most cases than anything else. Hence, if our religion is attacked, then we feel that we're attacked and our security system is under attack and we have to defend ourselves and, and fight back. Uh, what contemplative prayer does for you is it relativizes the energy that we put into the emotional programs for happiness, for approval, power, control, affection, esteem. And, and there's, there's no future for those projects, although we put an enormous amount of energy into it. They're not going to, the false self is not going to heaven, that's for sure. It, it, it has no future. It's, it's based on the illusion that we will find satisfaction, gratification, when we have enough security, enough approval, esteem, affection, enough power control, but there's never enough. The nature of it, these programs were created when we were children and had no reason to moderate. And so it's the exaggerated, it's, it's not the normal amount of these uh, precious human values or instinctual needs. It's the overweening or unlimited value of them. And so when we make them demands or, or, or on society, then we run into conflict with other false selves with the same programs and you get frustration. And when that frustration is serious enough, then we're willing to trample on the rights and needs of others to get what we want or to get away from what we don't want. The healing of the human condition is the experience, the lived experience of, of God's presence. As uh, a loving source of all that is. In the Christian terminology, we call God Father, but not everybody has a father that you'd want to use as an image of God. And so God the Father is not like any father we know, but is rather uh, a, a symbol that points us to the ultimate mystery as source of all that is and, and loving and personal. To experience God as personally embracing us. This is what I at least found uh, transforming and the motive to endure the recovery process in a monastic context. In other words, we have to taste by experience 
the possibility of how much evil we're actually capable of doing, of how much disintegrity is possible to us in order to hit bottom in such a way that we can put all our confidence in the higher power, in God, in Jesus, in the Christian frame of reference. You only trust God in the degree that you have given up hope in doing it for yourself. This doesn't mean we should try. But even in trying, you find out, at least that was my experience, that your efforts won't work sufficiently. They're a good start, but the very discovery that you can't do it yourself opens you to the kind of <coughs> total confidence in God or, or boundless confidence in God that enables the spirit uh, to work in us and to heal what needs to be healed. The most important part of centering prayer is doing it, not talking about it, though this has its importance, otherwise you can't get started. So rather than have me talk too long here, I thought that we might do your usual 20-minute practice of centering, and so I invite you to, uh, to sit comfortably and, and uh, slowly close your eyes, letting go of our immediate environment. Closing the eyes is, is a sort of symbol of closing down our ordinary psychological awareness and turning our gaze inwardly to our spiritual faculties and to our inmost center where God dwells with love and where God awaits us, where God is always available. And this is the moment to make ourselves totally available to the mystery of God's presence. And so let us introduce a sacred symbol of our intention to spend these 20 minutes together at this deep level of our being, sharing our common silence together, enriching each other by the various levels of habitual interior silence that each one has, has reached through the grace of God. And to keep ever so gently returning to the sacred symbol of our intention to consent to God's presence and action within us. Whenever thoughts come, we don't resist them, we don't hang on to them, we don't react emotionally to them. And if we're thinking about any perception, we gently return to the sacred word or symbol to reestablish our openness our consent and our surrender to the divine presence. So let us pray in this way for these 20 minutes.